What is up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Humbug Outdoors Fishing. It's your boy C. Smith here. And today, um, I actually had a, um, a pretty cool video for you guys. Now, I've improved with my bass fishing a lot over the years through experience. Um, but one thing I think that I've pretty much mastered is my loadout or my day pack. My gear over the years, my fishing gear, has been very refined to the point where I have a little bit of everything that I need all in one box. Um, and so that's what I wanted to cover today is what that box looks like and uh, you know what I pack in that bag. All right, and before you guys see the box and just start ripping me apart because I don't have this bait and you know this bait and you guys love this bait and this is what you throw all the time, just keep in mind this is based off of my experiences pond fishing and the areas around me. Keep in mind that there is a couple things that I'm probably missing that you guys like, so just think about that when you make your box. So, let's get into it. Here is the box right here. Um, this is a Casey Pond box. Um, so this right here is a Plano, uh, I think it's, it's like the 3700 size. You know, it's not that, you know, it's not the smaller size, it's definitely the bigger size up. Um, I would not be able to fit all this gear in the smaller one you open it up here you'll see this box is pretty dang packed you know I've got just about everything in here already so this first one right here this is my top waters all right so in here I have just kind of a covering a little bit of everything so we have a spook we have a popper and a whopper popper now if you notice these are all kind of in that bait fish color you know, this one's baby bass, you know, it's close enough. Um, that is what I throw a lot of. You can throw a darker one, you know, if you want to bring some variants. This is what I have had the most confidence in, so these are the three that I'm going to bring. Um, oh, I almost forgot this one. So, this is my uh, my little dragonfly. You guys know I actually tie flies as well. So, um, I tied this little dragonfly, and this thing right here is a late summer MVP. Um, so, yeah, I have that. Usually, I have a clear float or a rocket bobber in here. And, uh, yeah, they just crushed this thing. It's pretty cool. So, there's topwaters. Here, I have my frogs. So, there are three basic frogs that I like to have. Um, and that is, I like on... Uh, like cloudy water. I like a dark, you know, dark frog. So here I have the black and blue frog. Um, on days, you know, like sunny, clear water situations, I like a super realistic frog. Um, this one right here is my live target frog. I've had this thing for like four or five years now. You guys can tell it's, uh, it's taken a beating. And then the last one we have here is kind of a clear or a white frog. Um, I like this actually on overcast days. Um, this frog, this river to sea frog, it has really good hookup ratio. Um, so I like this too when I'm throwing a little bit thicker of pads or, uh, you know, thicker stuff just because it really drives them in. So this one right here is my, all my swim baits. I love throwing swim baits. So or just kind of bait fish stuff. So we have some flukes in here um, and we have some uh, extra Kitech. We have a Kitech on a jig head and we have a weedless rigged right there. So that's what I really like. I love throwing swim baits, especially now in the, you know, the fall transition. Uh, I'll probably be doing a video on uh, some flukes here soon because they are so deadly at this time of year. But there's that one. Um, and this one right here is kind of my reaction baits. So in here I have a lot of jerk baits. I have a Lucky Craft, a Rapala, and a Daiwa in here. And then this one is kind of a, uh, an interesting one. A lot of you probably don't have this in your box, but I love glide baits. And I was just throwing it today, actually, before I was filming this. Um, I love glide baits. Like, uh, oh my gosh, they are such an underrated pond bait. Um, this one right here is the Savage Gear Shine Glide. Uh, this thing's caught me a lot of fish, a lot of big bed fish on this. Um, so yeah, I always have this in my box because I just never know when I'm going to need it. It gets reactions out of fish that would not hit anything else. So that's the cool thing about that bait. Moving left here, we have our jigs. So in here I have a, um, a bigger flipping jig right there. Then I have, usually I have more jigs in here, but I actually snapped some off. Um, I have a finesse jig. This is just actually a Ned rig head. I put a skirt on with a little finesse worm. I love this in ponds. Um, it's also a killer in spring when they're on beds. And then I have some extra, just some extra trailer baits in there just in case a fish rips a craw um, I would recommend having a black and blue jig in there as well. Um, I also would have had a chatter bait but I do not have a chatterbait in this box right now. I just snapped one off. Um, so usually a chatterbait's in there. I like chatterbaits in white, 
black and blue, and like a bluegill or a green pumpkin. Uh, those three colors just get it done. Alrighty, so moving on, these are the rest of the hard baits right here. You guys notice in this box, I don't have very many duplicates, you know, of lures in here. You notice I have two lipless crankbaits. That is, that is how much I love this bait, is I actually carry an extra one, whoa, in case I snap another one off. So, um, yeah, I have those right there. You guys know that I absolutely hate crankbaits, but I always have to have one in here anyway. Uh, it's kind of like a baby bass color. Um, you know, it just kind of, it's a pretty universal color. Uh, that'll do good. I actually haven't caught a fish on this one yet, but I hate crankbaits, so he can just go away. Then here we have kind of some, this is a uh, two baits you guys probably don't have in your, your pond box, um, but you just never know when you're going to need them. Uh, I have a cast master. This is just like a one fourth ounce and a blade bait. I know those are just kind of two baits you don't have to have in there, but you know, from my experience, I love them and I would not go to a pond without those two. So, all right, going here, we have all of our terminal tackle. So if you see, I have it all in bags and that is because I hate rusty hooks. And I have noticed when I keep things in the bags, they actually stay a lot better than they would have, you know, without that. Right here, we have some owner size four mosquito hooks. These are kind of my drop shotting hooks, um, you know, like finesse, you know, finesse hook style stuff. So there's that. Then we have O-rings. Uh, these are, I have actually two different types of O-rings in here. I have the bigger O-rings, which are for like, you know, five inch Sankos, sink it, you know, six inch Sankos for wacky rigging. And then I have smaller ones in there, which help for Nico rigs. So I have those two right there. And then here we have just some um, regular EWG hooks. I believe these are three aughts. They kind of just, you know, universal. Use these for my flukes, my Sankos, just kind of everything. There's those. My ponds have a lot of cover. So here is my flipping stuff or my punching kind of. So I actually have some one and a half ounce punch skirts in here. And then I have some punching gear as well. I've actually used these a lot in cases. I had a pond uh, about a couple months ago that was actually too thick to even frog. So I bring this in and I just absolutely wiped them with this setup. So yeah, always good for me to have that in there. This one right here has got a lot of my jig heads. So if you see in there, I kind of got a little bit of everything. Got some darter heads, some wacky heads, uh, and then I have some Ned rigs as well. This is just kind of a universal, just kind of all my jig heads and everything I need go in that one right there. There's that. Uh, woo, all right. Um, next up is pretty simple. It's just your, uh, you know, bullet weights. I just kind of have everything from fourth ounce to like one, you know, 32nd in here. Um, you know, if I need anything heavier, I do have those one and one and a half ounces there. Um, so these are just for kind of, you know, just Texas rig Sankos or anything to just kind of get it down a little faster. You know, most of the ponds I fish are shallow enough where I don't even have to use very heavy weights. So there's those. Next up, we have uh, just size ones. Um, these are Mustad beak hooks. I use these for all my wacky rigs and just if I need anything else. It's always good to just have like a size one hook in your box because you never know when you're going to need it. So, boom. So this right here is my drop shot weights and then I actually have some screw lock heads in there. That's for a bait that I've kind of designed on my own. Uh, I may do... Ooh, I may do a video on that uh, next spring because they absolutely destroy on beds. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Now these are peg weights for uh, Texas rigs. So those are kind of pretty, you know, explanatory. They kind of just, you know, you guys know what those are. Um, and then right here, this is some clippers. I have a pair of clippers in almost every single one of my boxes and they've helped me out more than you can realize. So yeah, boom, there's those. Now. Going on to the last section of this box, and this is plastics. I'll just kind of go over these quick with you guys. Um, we have some Ned Rigs, some TRDs. Um, we have some Finesse Worms. I love those for ponds, those destroy. Um, then we have some uh, flipping Craws right here. Actually conjoined, and I put a bunch of different ones in there. For Craws, basically, all you need is green pumpkin and black and blue. That's all I have in there. Same thing with Senkos. Uh, I just kind of, you see I have some yums, some dingers in there, some Gary Yamamoto's, just have a little bit of everything. But if you notice, watermelon and like a black and blue or a June bug. Those are the only two colors you need for plastics, basically. 
Um, and so that's why I have those. All right, so if you guys noticed, these right here are all conjoined in the same bag, but I do not put these two together. And the reason why is that for some strange reason, the Z-Man Elastec, that stuff doesn't get along with other plastics. This is kind of the bully in the plastic world. Um, for some strange reason, this plastic messes up all the other plastics. Um, if you put it with like other brand, you know, stuff. So I always keep this just in the same bag. Um, it's fine. It doesn't take up much space. So yeah, that's why I do that. Because if you put those in this bag right here, it would all become a melted gooey mess in there. So yeah, there is all of my stuff. Like this thing has helped me so much. I mean, this has taken up zero space. It is the MVP. Like I said, if you, you know, my one you know, overarching summary of this video for you guys is compact your gear down a little bit, you know, simplify it. And you would be surprised at how much less stress it is for you, you know, less stuff to carry, you know, how much easier it is when you have less gear. I've seen pond fishermen and I look in their box, they have a whole box of Senkos, like a whole box, this size of Senkos, and they have pink Senkos, orange Senkos, chartreuse Senkos, watermelon Senkos, blue Senkos. They have every single type of color Senko you can imagine in one box. And I asked them and they said, yeah, the watermelon Senko is basically the only one I ever use. What's the point of carrying all that? I don't, that pisses me off. Why are you carrying all that gear in your box? So yeah, simplify. It is so much easier and once you do this, once you simplify all your gear to one box like this, and you take one fishing trip with it, you're gonna go, whoa, this is really nice. This is nice not having to lug around all this gear. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, let me know in the comments below and I can make more, you know, kind of videos like this. Um, Cause I really enjoy going over some of my gear and what I use and stuff. You know, if you guys want me to do a lake one, or if you guys want me to show some of my ocean fishing boxes, my shark box, my, you know, my rockfish box, whatever you guys want me to show, you know, I'd be welcome to, uh, you know, to show you guys. Okay, so we will see you guys next time on Humbug Outdoors Fishing. Yee! <laughs>